I'm George Foster Rhymes and this is Piggyback Comeback number three concerning our newspapers, news media, and what is it omitted from the news in the Valdosta, Lowndes County, and South Georgia area. As you have seen before, we have reported that there would be a time when the Valdosta Daily Times editor Kay Harris would meet with us. That day was Friday. Kay Harris of the Valdosta Daily Times met with me and Robinson, Mr. Robinson, and we had a very good conversation and dialogue. Mr. Robinson talked about what he went through down in Florida, his accomplishments, the pain of suffering from esophageal cancer, and what he has endured here in Valdosta and Lowndes County. Kay Harris listened attentively, and I must admit that I learned a lot about her from that meeting. And it was on a Friday. We didn't have a planned appointment. But she took time out of her schedule to meet with us. There's much on the internet and on my YouTube blog about the omissions of newsworthy events in our community and how there is an apparent effort of a practicing pattern to keep the people ignorant in our area. We talked about that, we discussed it. Brother Robinson talked about what his family endured as a result of him being diagnosed with cancer. We talked about the good old boy system. We talked about getting money on the south side of the railroad track of economic and social divide. We talked about practically everything that you could imagine. But most importantly, the thrust of my bus in talking with Ms. Harris, and I showed her this article wherein the space shuttle was on the front page of the Valdosta Daily Times. And I said to her that years to come, generation after generation, will be able to go to the Valdosta Daily Times and see that this was an end of an era simply because it was published in the newspaper. But too often in our area, there are things that occur that our children and coming generations will know nothing about because it's not reported. We discussed Equipment 10 and how little coverage is given to the support Equipment 10 is getting from people around this area, the state of Georgia, and even at the national level. She told me how much effort she put in trying to build a better newspaper, trying to inform the people. She told me about how she also have problems getting the news from various agencies in our local area with the special emphasis on the prisons. She talked about how she tried to get the word out to many of the people in this area but have ran into a wall. And so I am one not to condemn but to seek answers to problems that have plagued our community for such a long, long time. And so, this is take three of the piggyback comeback segment. And I do this because it is what I do. And because I want people totally informed on what goes on in their community.
She also brought this to my attention when the Times reported about why we did not receive the status of the friendliest town in America. And I found it to be a very powerful article. I found it to be truthful. And I'm hoping that we can help bridge the gap of the great racial divide here in Valdosta. People have denied it, but it's real. It's real in the distribution of funds and along the lines of receiving contracts. It's real when it comes down to equally em equal employment. It comes down to, as seen through many people's eyes, as if you are in the clique and among the slicks, then success can be yours. But when you are someone that's locked out of the system, then you are just that, locked out of the system. I somewhat understand Times Editor Kay Harris a little better now. And I guess she understands me a little better. But if you go back through my blog, look at my YouTube video, you will not be able to find anything where I outrightly criticize the beautiful Kay Harris, the Times editor, or anyone else for that matter outside of the basis of truth as I understand it and believe I can prove. To me, it's not a personal vendetta against anyone. If the mayor and council, for instance, had not pushed citizens to be heard to the back of the agenda, as if though they don't want to hear to the vote about hear to the voters, if they had not outrightly fought us every step of the way in getting Barbara Park name changed, I already knew it was going to change. It's in my first presentation for the mayor, I knew it was going to be changed. There's something about right that it is my delight. And I'm 100% sure, as I was about Barbara Park, as I was about the 1860 charter that was displayed in City Hall, a disgraceful city charter, I knew it had to be removed. Because America is better than that, and the state of Georgia is better than that. I also know that though our present mayor and council members can push citizens to be heard to the end, that's going to be changed. I'm 100% sure of that. And I'm also sure and confident that blacks are going to get some of these contracts that they've been locked out of for decades. The reason I'm so sure about it is because I believe in the God of my ancestors. I believe that if our TV stations and newspapers and radio will not be fair and cover all aspects of our community, then God going to send another newspaper in here, a new television station and radio, who will tell the story. That is a true reflection of the founding fathers of this republic. If I didn't believe that, then I would pack my bags and leave. But it's something about right that drives me to do what I'm doing. And I want to close on this note. This is not the piggyback comeback that I was intending to give. But I, get, I cut this one today because I want to thank Kay Harris for doing what I felt she should have done in the first place, and that is to meet with myself and Brother Robinson. But we're going to continue to talk about the economically oppressed. We're going to continue to talk about the 30 jail deaths that not one Christian, Muslim, Jew or Gentile, Protestant or Catholic, is talking much about now. 
And from what I understand, the people in the, in the jail can't even, the people out there that go visit the inmates can't even take a Bible into the jail. Mm, mm, mm. Just had somebody tell me that yesterday. I'm sure they have their reasons. But I think that needs to be published in the Valdosta Daily Times and let people know why. I'm sure they have a reason. Can't take a Bible when they go to minister to the inmates. Well, as I look out here in Peyton Park, I'm confident that one day Valdosta will move into the 21st century wherein we all can be proud. I'm going to leave you now. But I'm going to come back with take four of the paperback, piggyback, come back because there's many things that have transpired but have been omitted in the press, television, and radio. But you know, I thank Kay Harris and the Valdosta Daily Times because at least they be at a lot of these public meetings that our TV stations and radio do not. And so that means we are somewhat better informed. And so I'm going to leave and I want to say to you, 